hello and welcome to another video on Texplanation. Today I'm going to be showing you the best way to rip a CD to mini disc. So what you're going to need, I found the best way to do this is with a PlayStation 2. Believe it or not, you may have good luck with other CD players, but the main thing I found is that the PlayStation 2 besides being ubiquitous and very common, it has an optical output, which you uh, need to get the best signal to the mini disc player. And it also puts the track marks in the right location. So as the CD goes from one track to the next, it will automatically space the tracks and put track marks exactly as they are on the source CD. Um, you can use a computer to record through optical, but I found uh, it does not do the track marks, and I haven't been able to test any other CD players, but uh, yeah, my suggestion is to just use a PlayStation 2. And then you'll need a Toslink optical cable, a Toslink to 3.5 millimeter adapter, and a mini disc recorder. And you want to make sure it has uh, quite a you want to make sure it has quite a bit of battery because recording mini discs uses a lot more power than playing mini discs, so make sure the battery is topped up when you uh, record a CD because you do not want to have it die in the middle of recording. So we will start I guess by hooking up the optical cable. So what you'll want to do is one end of the cable will go into the PlayStation 2 and the other will go into your mini disc recorder. The one end that goes into your mini disc recorder, you need to attach the adapter. So you see it's just a, oh, okay, if I can get it to focus. Focus, please, camera. Okay, there we go. Um, it's just a square and you just kind of pop it on there like that, and that's good to go. The other end plugs into the back of a PlayStation 2 in the optical port. There it goes. Pretty simple. Plug this end into the mini disc recorder. Uh, you'll want to set your mini disc recorder. See if I can get the menu to show up. Okay. So it's telling me there's no disc, so that's good. Um, bring up the menu. Oh, maybe you need a disc in there. So I'll come back to that. So I guess we'll start. We'll put the CD in the PlayStation 2. We'll put the mini disc, so this is the same exact mini disc <clears throat> that they actually use in the Matrix. I figured that was an appropriate one to use since it's for the soundtrack for this movie and it's literally the same exact one that they use in the movie. Same exact type. Okay. So now that there's a disc in my, yeah, blank mini disc in my recorder, you want to go into the menu and make sure it's in sync record. Okay. See how it says sync R? Make sure that's on because that will tell it, it will basically use the data coming from the optical cable to tell it when to start recording and when to place track marks. So make sure that's on. Oh, here we go, record mode. And then I have it set to SP, gosh, which is the standard playback for mini disc. Um, I do that just because it's maximum compatibility. If you wanna be able to fit more music uh, you can change it to LP2, or, and that will fit twice as much music 
on a single mini disc. Um, so in this case, it would be about 150 minutes, a little less than that. And then LP4 will do four times as much recording that significantly reduced quality. But I just prefer SP because it's the best quality that is compatible with every single mini disc player. Okay, so that's good. I have it in the correct mode. Now, you'll want to turn on your PlayStation 2. Now, the PlayStation 2 will pop straight to the audio CD menu. Um, but what you want to do before you do that, you want to go to the main menu and go to the options. Oh no. Or you want, yeah, you want to go to the main PlayStation 2 menu, go to system configuration, and make sure that digital out optical is on so i've already done that but yeah you'll want to make sure that's on otherwise the tossling won't actually work so now that that's good we'll go back to the cd okay now before we start playing the cd oh geez i just dropped the controller We want to go back to our mini disc recorder. Now, every mini disc recorder is probably going to have different controls than mine. Um, but to record, you press this button and hit play. And play on mine is up here. So we just do this and hit play. And now, see, it comes up digital and it starts blinking at zero and. It's saying it's going to start recording track one. Now, it won't start recording until it starts receiving a signal from the PlayStation. Uh, but now it's set to record, so I will set this down. I'll go back to the PlayStation, go to track one, and just hit play. You can see, now that I've started playing, that is recording. Uh, so I'm just going to let it go. You will have to let it play the entire album, the entire CD. It records in real time. Uh, and all you want to do, really, is you can walk away and come back. But you want to make sure, before the last track... You just want to check to make sure that the track and time that the PlayStation is playing matches up with the track and the time that the recorder is playing. So I'm going to cut right here and I will be back near the end. Okay, we are at the end of the album. And what you'll notice is it does record a few extra seconds on the last track and then it starts blinking like this on the recorder letting you know that it's not receiving anything so then you just press the stop button it will do the last bit of editing and cleanup and stuff and there you go then the CD is now recorded to the mini disc I like this method of using the PlayStation 2 because it preserves the exact spacing of the tracks on the CD. So actually, if you play the CD and the mini disc side by side, they will line up perfectly, even in between songs and stuff, especially for gapless tracks. For example, uh, Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, you know, the, that entire album is basically one long song, and this method will record it basically perfectly with the correctly placed track marks. Uh, the one downfall is if you have a track with 
a more than a few seconds of dead space in the middle of a track, the mini disc player will pick that up and think it is a gap between tracks, and then it will start recording when that dead space ends. So that is only an issue in very rare cases. Um, for example, on my Halo um, video game soundtrack, one of the tracks, the Halo um, song, has about 30 seconds of dead space between the main part of the song and then the bonus part of the song. And so the mini disc recorder will actually record that as two tracks and cut out all the dead space other than a few seconds in the track. But other than that, yeah, it's perfect. Should be good to go. And ready to be played on all mini disc devices. So thank you for watching this video on Texplanation. Subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want. Thanks, bye.